The United Nations is calling Haiti the world's most serious humanitarian crisis in decades. The death toll is now estimated to be as high as 200,000. Haitians are scrambling to find food and water while guarding their few possessions against looters. And five days into the crisis, the UN and other agencies are still struggling to get aid into the country. The big problem is the almost total collapse of civil rule. And to that end, thousands of US troops are being sent in to help restore some kind of order. North America correspondent Craig McMurtry is in Port-au-Prince. A hole in a pile that was once a house. Inside, in an impossibly small space, a woman is still alive. Her daughter lies dead beside her, but she's held on for six days. Quite often we don't find life, but when we do find life, and there's life under the rubble, we'll do all that we can to get them out. This used to be the Port-au-Prince tax office, seven stories of it. After painstaking hours of cutting a tiny tunnel through the pancaked building, an Israeli rescue team pulls out Gilles France. Je me sens comme privilégié. I think I am privileged and my rescue is like a miracle. Uh, it felt very good. This is what we're trying to do. A pause at the shattered remnants of the UN headquarters in Haiti as Jens Christensen, a Danish UN worker, is found alive. I'm bruised. I'm bruised, but not hurt. Last night, our search and rescue teams pulled 40 people out of the rubble alive. That was, le that was less than 12 hours ago. So <clears throat> the search and rescue takes precedent over the relief in the first three to five days. But Stephen McAndrew promises that a big aid push is coming. The Red Cross is planning to provide food and shelter for 300,000. The UN Secretary General has flown in to tell survivors not to give up hope. But desperate hunger can't wait. At this aid distribution point, UN peacekeepers keep a mob off a consignment of biscuits. Here, looters fight over clothes until someone brandishes a gun. Haiti's president is hardly seen outside his compound. He says it's like Port-au-Prince has been bombed. If the people are able to see that this aid is being coordinated properly and channeled properly, despite their suffering, there will be relief. But they don't see it, and many aren't waiting around. There are a handful of buses here, and they're packed. There's just no room left. There are thousands of people in this area, and they're desperate to get out of the city, get out of Port-au-Prince. The problem is, even if they get on the buses, they, they can't get across the Dominican border because it's closed. So all they can do is get to the provinces, but they do feel safer there. On Sunday, the faithful have nowhere else to go. Their Catholic church has been destroyed. Many of the priests are gone. He cries out that the blood of God has fallen on Haiti. These are resilient people, and they believe this is God's will. Craig McMurtry, ABC News, Haiti.